Hello and welcome to another riveting episode of uh, Men Who Talk About Music slash Listenerland. <laughs> Men who talk about music. Men, Men who, uh, well, this is not all we talk about when we're out socially, but this is pretty much the main topic. And have I got a topic for you today? Ooh. What's your topic for us today? Here we go. Guitar.com. Or as we might have known it back in the day as Guitar Magazine. Mm-hmm. All right, yeah. All right. right. Yeah. They've come up with a list of the top 10 guitarists. Oh, oh here we go. Of, oh, chestnut. But I've only written down nine because once you get past so many, it's what's the point? Would anyone like to hazard a guess who's, who's maybe at the top five? Who would you put in the top five? No, they're always contentious, these. Yeah. And it's, they do it. I think. Current times. Yeah. The current times. Not legacy. Not legacy players. Current. Oh, right. Oh, currently. difficult. So, are all these people alive by saying current I'm yes. gonna, I'm going to say Kirk Hammett. Even if you can get one of them. If you get, I'll tell you what, out of, the t- out of the nine that are written down, if you can pick, if you can name one that's Kirk, in this Kirk list. Kirk Hammett. No. Oh. Scott Holliday. No. No, is his sister, Billy. <laughs> the, the, well, this is going to be difficult, isn't it? Yeah. I'll tell you it. what, I'm just going to go through it. Yes, yeah, please. Go on, then. Number one. No, go ten. I ain't got ten written down. Good I'll give you number nine. Nine, nine to one. Number nine. The is, drum roll. Um, I'm probably going to pronounce this wrong, but Tom DeLonghi from Blink 182. Yeah. Blink 182. I know, I know what you mean. Really? No. Oh, no, it's all right. No, no, he has got a signature Dan Electrode guitar. It's still not a great guitar player. No, it's not. No. No, the, no it's not. <sighs> Number eight, Taylor Swift. Fuck oh, off. right, stop. No. Stop. <laughs> stop now. No, no I, can, I know it full well what they're doing. They're trying to create controversy to well, get it's attention. Working. Yeah. Yeah, it's working. It's working. Now, the English always do. Their argument for this would be, well... She's written a lot of uh, hit songs. But she's not a famous... Well, she does play guitar, she's famous, but she's not a good guitarist. <laughs> but you can see where they've done it, right? Yeah. Oh, oh it's, yeah. It's working. <sighs> okay, number seven. Uh, Ed O'Brien, uh, Radiohead. Okay. Uh, That's... No. Yeah. But, uh, no. Uh, number six. I think they've thrown that one in to try and get a bit of... Chris, uh, Chris Shifflett... Oh, Chris Shifflett from uh, Foo Fighters. Foo Fighters. Foo Fighters. Foo Fighters. Foo Fighters. Uh, Johnny... he, no, Shifflett is a good guitarist, though. Mm-hmm. So yeah. is Ed O'Brien. Johnny Greenwood. Johnny Greenwood. From uh, Radiohead again. Oh, right. Oh. Yeah. Sam Fender. He's the one that's joined the lead singer. Smile. In the band Smile. Smile. Yeah. yeah. Sam Fender. A uh, bit of a, a, a trendy indie pop artist. Right. Number three, John Mayer. Okay. Never heard of him. No. Yeah. Yeah. I'm surprised. yeah that's fine. I, I, think that's yeah. A, I think that's a token one for the people that, that that's like. What, that's, yeah. yeah that, that's that something. know what they're on about. But we all know this one, and, and we all know that this person is much better than John Mayer at the guitar. But guitar. Local boy, Alex Turner. Wait a minute. He's from uh, Arctic, Monkeys. Arctic Monkeys. Arctic Monkeys, Monkeys isn't that's it? right. Yeah. No. He's oh. number two. He's number two, but I, I think what they're doing with this one is that because a lot of um, Gen Zs like to play that their riff to do I uh, want to know or so th- there's a couple of riffs that he does. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is that what they call but, it? The fluorescent but adolescence. He's not, he, well. he's not. No. Number no. two. No. Number one is John Frusciante from Red Hot Chili Peppers. He's a good guitar player. Yeah. It was in tune. I, I, th- I think I, th- I, th- I think you've missed John Mayer's the best one out of the whole lot, but I think yeah. the list is a joke. It is. Oh, of course it is. It is. Yeah, it is. You are, yeah. and you have missed one. Number ten. No, number number one one number one plus. No, number one is John Fashanti. Yeah, the one above him. Number one A star. <laughs> oh, go on then. Oh, uh, it says jo- uh, Joe Bonamassa. Joe Bonamassa. Uh, <laughs> brackets. <laughs> Wayne <laughs> says so. Uh, <laughs> no. Yeah. No. Oh, number two. Uh, number two, Alex Turner. Alex, Alex Turner. Turner. Number yeah. three was John Mayer. The only one that deserves to be on the list is John, John Mayer. Mayer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But like you say, I think it'd be interesting just... to see the, the 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 nine to twenty list of that list. I think given the the 
Uh, Where's top Jack nine? White? To see what they call. Arguably, would they have they released anything in the past twelve months? I don't know. All right, radio and guitarists. The, are they in Smile? Well, you know, it's. It, I don't know. Jack White is far better than a lot of them that yeah. you just mentioned. And you didn't like Jack White for a long time. No, I didn't. Yeah. No, it weren't that. Until so he came get, over I, and I, gave no, you a scope. It weren't that I didn't like Jack White as a guitarist. As a person. I, as a person, I can't stand. No, it's all right, actually. Third Man Records, can't, can't complain there. But I didn't gel with their music. Guitar-wise or whatever. Isn't it? Which I find surprising because it's quite abstract blues. Yeah, it is. I think maybe it's because it was new and it was, it, I did, it, I didn't it, gel it was with difficult it to swallow. I think I've learned to... No, I'm not going to say I've learned to accept. No, that's wrong. Um, I've warmed to it slightly, but it's not something I dip into regularly to embrace. It's not. I'm just not. I'm not. I'm not on board with it, really. But I do. I do like the man, and I like some of his music. But I, I find it difficult. He's not afraid to be creative, which is... No, a, I like creative. creative. I like creative. What, there, call is, his, what they call his group? Jack White and the Provocateurs or something like that? Uh, no, it's the Raconteurs. Raconteurs. It's not Jack White and the Raconteurs, it's just Raconteurs. Uh, obviously, there's the White Stripes, then he's got... Solo he's a very interesting White. character. Oh, he is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and I like him. Very interest. knowledgeable. I like he's, he's a master upholsterer, too. Yeah, he yeah. is. Yeah, I like him. Yeah. He, he knows a lot I'm of drawn shit. to people like that because... Yeah. There's is not it, enough of people, no. enough people like that. He's but interesting to listen his to. His music or... sometimes is not enough. It's not interesting enough. It's, uh, his personality is more interesting than his music sometimes. Yeah. Mm. I get, oh, I, that's my I get, impression of yeah. a squeaky door, by the way. Sorry. Oh, right. Okay. I get what you mean by that. Yeah. 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 So we all remember the story about Universal Music pulling their, their artists from TikTok. Right, and they, oh, were, yeah, they, they were no yeah, longer allowed to promote yeah. their you stuff. Can't do the music, and so we're all like, it. "Why are they doing this? What's the big idea? What's the big do idea?" Do they realise what they're doing? And apart from annoyed. Taylor Swift, apart from Taylor Swift, special circumstances. Uh, you can't do that. Universal Sorry. Music has signed a deal. <laughs> you, can, you, you can't do that <laughs> when you talk about women. You can't no. do that when you talk about Taylor Swift. No, you get all Swifties, backhanders. <laughs> well, well could be. Feeling the pony? <laughs> well, um, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> uh, Universal Music has signed a deal to train AI uh, to make ultra high fidelity vocal models of artists signed to the label. Yeah, they want to own. So, they, they, so sorry. So there'll be a clause within the contract which they can manipulate, yeah. which means that they will be able to create art music in the style of the artist that's signed to their label. So whoever signs them are pretty much like, oh, crap. Yeah. We, so we, what you're saying is the artist hasn't got a say in this. It's like in the contract yeah. that yeah. they can be duplicated. This is long-term thinking. Yeah. It's long-term thinking because what they see right. is AI. That's and, dark though, right? That and, and, and what they're doing is I think they're making wrong. sure that they've got the rights of bands that might be big in the future and current bands that are big, that they've got the rights to the anything that uh that is reproduced. Oh yeah, it could be it could be a defense rather yeah. than yeah. Yeah. Like, it's a money exercise. Yeah, yeah. they've got could the be. rights to visual images, yeah. vocal or musical images of that artist. And it generates money from them. Yeah, it could be. It, sorry, so my initial thought was, excuse me, that it's it's there to produce music on behalf of the artists. No. And it could be, obviously. But, oh, that's part yeah. of the deal, but, but the long-term plan of that is to they will make have sure they will, it's they to would have money covered out of copies. all aspects, won't yeah. they? They're not going to let a penny slip through their fingers if they don't have to. Because they must be thinking that their, day, they're gonna their grab day everything are, days they are can. numbered, as it is with record labels, because like, how do they sustain? Yeah. Really, in the future, in fifty years' time, what's the point in record labels? Well, we're, we're already seeing that. Yeah. So they're trying to get their hands yeah. on as much and tie the, tie those little loops in, whatever they can, whatever they can generate some cash. Like, like hey, we can't get away from AI. It's going to oh, it's, well, it's happening. <laughs> it's like going it to in a big in a big way. It, yeah. So if they can get their hands on, because it's free for all, it's cowboy time. If they can get their hands on artists present and in the future 
they've got the rights, they've got the image rights, they've got everything. Mm. And they're going to use it. Oh, they will do. They did this. They did this when CDs came out. It were all vinyl. And then on the horizon were CDs. Dum, dum, dum. Yeah. You can scratch them, they're indestructible. Well, this was even Put them in your car, don't the, get annoyed. The this, were even, this were even before they started sort of or jump. showing it on these futuristic programs. It was tomorrow's World, we're gonna, they're going to bring out this. Before then, the smart money were buying up publishing rights. Right. All the record labels in the smart money because they knew that in Silicon Valley, this thing were going to take over. And who's not going to like this thing? When they described it, you know, you can't scratch it. You can throw it against the wall. It'll still play. You can take your LP and car we, with you. We do like, everybody likes to, the next big thing, the next progression. And they, all, and they all buy into it. And it was shiny. And it was shiny. People like things that are shiny. Magpies. We drop, we're like magpies, aren't we? Yeah. So the smart money. He's pleased with oh. himself there. Pleased with himself there. Magpies. magpies. So the smart money bought up all the I got publishing one right. rights. This is why we are seeing a rise in vinyl today. Do you know? Because the, the record companies, they're saying they're not interested, but they are pushing the rise in vinyls. Because when vinyls are finished, long term thinking, when vinyls have gone past its peak in 25 years' time, they'll be the next big thing. CDs. So they'll be repackaging <laughs> what's been put onto vinyl, which were originally put onto CD, which originally came from vinyl, as we all be repackaged again. The thing with CDs mm. is that you you normally wouldn't be able to hear it, and through the devices that you would be playing it through, you wouldn't normally be able to hear it. There's a lot of compression yeah. to the sound. Yeah. Um, so you're not hearing the true way it was meant to be heard. Yeah. Um, and one of the other big faults with CDs is that with the design of a CD and what it was going to be played on, specifically mobile CD Walkmans, is nobody thought about jacket pockets. Because uh, they never don't fit. They never quite fit. And it's always like slightly hanging out. You have to be careful inside pocket. Well, you have to like, you have to the strap what went around you. You only roller blades. Oh, terrible. I, I Mist, were your big headphones on? Or your, your bass box on, on your shoulder. But like, you should yeah. carry them like that, didn't they? A Walkman. <laughs> A cassette one will sit in your entire pocket, but a CD one, no. And every now and again, you had to eject it and wound it round with your pencil so it played properly. <laughs> That's not a CD. <laughs> a CD? No, cassette. Cassette. I don't remember doing that to a CD. No, no cassettes. Cheap ones. <laughs> you want to get you want to get that sorted. Like. Gonna, you want to spend a bit of money on Cassettes, you just have to put pencil in oh, pencil, and, yeah. and, and wind it up. Oh, oh those cassettes tie, that would turn tie, over as well. Tie that tape. <laughs> you have to put a pencil in and wind it round that <laughs> Yards and yards of bloody tape stuck in hi fi play. Oh, it's like, twisted, it's twisted. What, what's happening here? <laughs> no, but no. while we're on the subject of LPs, oh, LPs, LPs or vinyl, as they're now called, vinyl is not LPs, is it? It's vinyl, the rose gold vinyl, no, LPs. You're, Go from, on, then. you're from Rotherham, LPs, lad. Um. So it has been mentioned on here before, and and I've and I've I've said it myself. Why would people buy vinyls when Bluetooth in front of your phone is just so simple? You just go onto Spotify and you've a million, over a million albums there at your fingertips. You just scroll down and play your Bluetooth to the speaker and you don't have to get up. Brilliant. Why would you want to Why mess about, about to going over to a record deck? But in the last week, I've turned to the dark side. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I've gone back to You're vinyls. Now calling you Shirley. Yeah, I've gone, gone back, back to black. I've gone back to vinyls, and I've recently got a, a turntable again, and, and and some albums. And the first thing I can remember is last week got my first album I put on, and I put it down, dropped needle on it, and I sat there and I'm thinking, right, am I going to like this or is it? I, d I didn't. I'd forgot what to expect until it started to play. And while it's playing in background and I'm reading album cover and I thought, I forgot how good this is. Talk me through the experience. Yeah. Well, it, 
Tell me what album you bought. Uh, yeah, what were it? Ballads of John Henry by Joe Bonamassa. Don't tell us about that <laughs> album. <laughs> the first one I bought. It wasn't very predictable, <laughs> I, was it? I, I, I want to suggest a, I want to suggest a valve here. It's Des O'Connor, Dicker Dum Dum. Dicker Dum Dum. The, the funny thing is, is my mother-in-law fetched a bag of albums up. So I'm r- rifling through there and in there. There's a Connor, Dicker Dom Dom. You're joking. <laughs> no, I'm like, no. <laughs> uh, 1969. Uh, she's got three albums by There's a Connor. Absolutely oh, not. Oh, he got, he got to number 14 <laughs> in 1969. So, yeah, so I'm sat there and I'm, I drop the needle, I walk across and I'm listening. And I thought, oh my God, yeah. How good is this? I forgot, I forgot what this was like. I mean, this is a long time since I've heard. Vinyl. So uh, it was and Joe and Joe John Henry. Master, yeah, John. And I'm sat there on, on, on settee. You read it sleeve notes. And I'm reading sleeve and it's got all pictures on. I'm looking at pictures oh, while I'm on listening. Wall, it. Produced it. There's everything on there. There's, you know, there's, there's just, there's quotes from him. There's a, uh, on right hand side, there's like a paragraph. There's lyrics on there. No. No, no lyrics. But no. There's, pa- there's, there's a paragraph um, of what Bonamassa's wrote and thanking fans to buying his album, ninth album, and all this on and I just thought, I just forgot how good that was. And you wonder why me and, and, me and I, Louis well, went on about it. I know. It. I just couldn't get my head around why would people want to go back to getting up, turning it over, sitting back down and getting up, turning it over, when you can just Bluetooth, put album on. It's just easy. But it's, it's not about the easy. It's, now, I don't know if the younger people will understand the same feeling that I got because I went back 30 years. Well, they don't know that. Right. They only know streaming. Yeah. Yeah. But for well, me... It's, well, it's just yeah. a novelty thing. To yeah. Them into. So I'm sure that, I mean, I'm in my 50s now. I'm sure I'm not the only person that thought, yeah, I can't see vinyls ever coming back on. It's too easy to Bluetooth. And then they get the vinyl, bite the bullet, get the vinyl, put it on it. And you go back 30 years and you think, wow. That would mint that. That would be brilliant. I really enjoyed that. It's actually better than listening to it on Spotify. And you have to get up, you turn of it over, it you drop yeah. the needle. So since then, I mean, I've bought quite a few albums and got ACDC and um, oh, Zeppelin ones, Pink Floyd ones. But it's just like, oh my God, I just forgot how good these are. Desert Connor ones. Desert Connor one, yeah, for Dicker Dum Dum. Well, rich towns right, of Desert Connor. Two by Desert Connor, apparently. <laughs> And I just thought, yeah, I thought, oh my God, that's brilliant. And then my lad is what he's 25 and he's he's looking at like oh that's good, yeah. So if this is what you used to play, yeah, this is what we used to play, aren't you? And then we put B side on. B side, what's that? Yeah. What's the B side? He had no idea. You flip it over. Well it's not of that generation. No, he's it? not. But then it got me thinking like Oh, no, he won't. Because, I mean, he was born in 98. I'm like... Did it, you didn't no, turn a CD over? No. You used thought, to have secret tracks on a CD. He won't, won't, yeah. won't have known that. No. no. But you forget, don't you? But because, the idea of a B-side is, that, yeah. is that like a supporting Because I've song. come along from vinyl, tapes, CDs, streaming. Now I'm going back to vinyl. I know all that. Started but, with spoons, didn't it? Yeah. yeah. And an and, and old washboard. Yeah. yeah. And But he doesn't. No. He, yeah. he, he knows... CDs onwards. Yeah. So all and, these, and they're even younger than y- Yeah. So all like, these vinyls that are coming out now. That. They no. don't. They're no streaming. The, that's yeah, it. They only no streaming. They only know that. What, what you, you and a Spotify, don't you? I mean, he, he likes grime and all that stuff. And he come into me and goes, look. He says, I can't believe this. He says, even grime artists are fetching them out on, on, on these vinyls now. Yeah. On these vinyls. And he's just like, I, I, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. The, they're all coming. They're all coming through, and and that, but I, I had to tell him what a B side was. He had no idea. And you idea. took all your vinyls to Carbon. Oh, don't go there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh no, I did. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, there's, a, there's an organic <laughs> experience that's had with it, and it's the thing of like which I've said before is like yeah. you were I on think, the cusp of both, weren't you? Well, yeah. I mean, I remember both. Obviously, I would say you would have been in that. I was, born in, I, I was born, time change, I was born in 86, so I think I was probably the last generation of like analog to yeah. digital. Um, but 
I think there's a, a, as a as an important place for both. I think digital is really good because you can find so many new artists. Oh yeah, and, and the, accessibility, oh, yeah, yeah. The, the accessibility is fantastic. It's I, great. Won't, I won't disregard Spotify for one minute. No, but, but there's an organic experience about dedicating some time and thinking. Okay, I've put this record on. I'm I'm going to listen to at least one side of this record. Yeah, it's like when you go to the cinema, you can't just skip the cinema. You know, you've got to watch the film. Yeah, you, could, yeah. you can't yeah. start looking at your phone. Or Even the tracks you don't like, yeah. You have to listen to it. And you can obviously skip the, the tracks and stuff, but it's a faff to get the pick, pick the needle up, try and find the little gap, put it back down, you this awful crackle, and you don't want to risk damaging the record. So you just let it play, and you listen to songs that you normally skip. Yeah. And then you appreciate something as yeah. a piece of work, which is, the artist has, has put together as an album. They've put a lot of time and effort in, in creating this piece that you're about to listen to. But when you listen to it online... You don't care about the album. You just, it's disposable. There's no next, content, next, is there? Next, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No content. Or you have no. the power. Streaming. No. You, on, on, no. With digital content, you have the power to shuffle. Yeah. yeah. And then that, that messes up the whole order of how they intend it to be heard. Yeah. So when you when you pick a vinyl, like he's pointed out, you've got the sleeve notes, you've got where it was actually made, who's produced it, who's engineered it, who's yeah. playing on it. When you're streaming, you're just listening. Yeah. No, but... You've got none of none of that previous information. No. Let's no. imagine you've made an album, right? You I'm made, imagining, right? You've yeah. made an album. It was a good one. What song are you open it with? Oh, I like this song because it's a great start, and I want to finish with this one. Yeah. Suddenly, when it's digital, that's been taken away. Yeah. Like the the whole everything's been jumbled up. You've got no power over it. This yeah. this thing that you've laboured over. And it's a big thing, that it's a big thing. Continuity within an album, it's a big thing. You can get it wrong. Yeah. And it, you're like, oh, it's just like, it don't work because it's not, it's just too disjointed. You're going from this to that. If things work through and it, it from one to the next one, it often works a lot better. A lot yeah. of songs. The listening picked, experience is better. A lot of songs don't make the albums and a lot of songs are picked through how well it works within a set of songs. Yeah. Yeah. All right. When you get your concept ones, they have a natural progression. Yeah. But when you've got an album of songs that aren't uh, of that nature, They've got to work against each other. They can't. They aren't got to rub against each other. Mm. Mm. And it's it's an art in itself, I suppose that. But I'm really glad to hear that you are embracing vinyls again. Yeah. So I've started me a collection up again. Um, I don't suppose you could recommend. You couldn't really do with vinyl what you can do with Spotify. Like you said, you can't go and you you can't buy like I. I'm not going to get every album that I've got on Spotify back onto vinyl. No. Because, I mean, they've gone up that much now. I mean, you're looking at £30 an album upwards. So it's the favourites, the things yeah, that you... but the, the classic ones. ones the that, things that mean something to you. Yeah, I'm going to renew all of them. Yeah. And, and, when you say classic, do you mean classic, classic to you? No, classic to me. You know, classic I, to you. Like things like... Um, I can buy ACDC, you've yeah. got Zeppelin ones, Wall, Pink Floyd. Not Fire. just because somebody said they're classic. No. The classic to yeah, you. Yeah, the ones that I like. Right. But like, I like Pink Floyd on my Spotify for what I, I don't know, probably got all albums. But if I'm going to get vinyl, I've got The Wall. The only other one I probably get on <laughs> vinyl me. is probably like Echoes, which is the best of all of them. And then yeah. the, the, I'll be quite sufficient with that then because, oh, else, I've got all the albums on my playlist anyway. Yeah. So I don't want to go down that road of trying to replicate my Spotify no, no. into albums. You're not going to be a vinyl collector. No, I'm just going to... You're going to get, be an enthusiast. Get, yeah, get back the ones that I can get up on a Saturday morning. Oh, I love it. Oh, side three. Try, do, side three? Yeah. Good this Lord. This is an unusual two-sided vinyl. I'm going to listen. Yeah, yeah. It must be a good band. Only good bands bring out double... Uh, gatefold, is it as well? Yeah, gatefold. Oh, yeah, yeah, good yeah. Lord. So just things like that, and I just when I was listening, I thought, oh my god, I just forgot how good this is. Oh, but Sat there quality. listening it, and and sound quality is brilliant. The record player I've got, I can Bluetooth it to it, so I Bluetoothed it to my soundbar, and it, it's it's brilliant. It's the quality is just what I remembered. It's it's a really good quality. There's a lot of things going off in there that. You don't hear on Spotify if unless you've got it on level 18 and oh, everything starts shaking. But on, on a vinyl, you don't have to have it on that. You can put it on four or five or six and there's all this background stuff going off that you don't hear when you stream. Mm. And the quality is just a lot better. And I just thought, while you're listening, you can, like I say, you can read off some lyrics in. You 
can sing along to it, which is probably, in Sorry? my case, not a good idea. <laughs> Uh, but you can read, you can come read inlays on, and this all. Come on, and I, come yeah. on. <laughs> and I just thought, I forgot all about this. Yeah. Stuff that I used to do when I was a young lad and I'm doing again now. I thought, oh my God, this is mint. It's brilliant. No, it's brilliant. don't go down that route. You'll get locked up again. Yeah. Oh, I've been out of that long. <laughs> but yeah, so I've gone back to the dark side, so to speak. No, I, you haven't. When, when I said, I, might, I don't think it'll catch on. You said. Why would you want to do that? Yeah. Why would you want to do that when you can just go, beep? Nah, nah, I don't get it. I don't get it. Yeah. And you laughed. I did, yeah, yeah. You mocked. I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only one no. that said. Do you get no. the idea then when I when I said to you that, oh, I'd even put an album on one? Yeah, yeah. You get that now? Yeah. He's recently purchased, purchased the purchased. wall. I have. Yeah. So you could put that on your, on your wall. By Pink Floyd. You could do. It is by Pink Floyd. Not the wall that is hanging things on. <laughs> <laughs> but you could. No, he's yeah. just bought this brick wall. No, you could buy that. and You, you, yeah. you have bought that. And you, you could actually put that up there as like a feature. Yeah. In between my T-shirts somewhere. In between your T-shirts. and Because I've got music T-shirts all on the walls. And then... Uh, musical T-shirts. Music musical T-shirts. T-shirts, yeah. Gigs yeah. and... Chicago. Yeah. Don't get excited, Louis. <laughs> Who are these T-shirts? John jo Bonamassa. There's Correct. Quite, there's quite a few Bonamassa ones. Yeah. There's two Kenny Williams, but there's a lot of Bonamassa ones. A lot, of, a lot of blood around the collar, though, like you've torn them off them. Yeah. <laughs> Even the hoodies yeah. are there as well. And ripped. <laughs> and guitar and apps and, you know, boxes and... Like Joe Bonamassa is <laughs> thrown up on you. <laughs> he didn't want to give up the boxes, I can tell you. <laughs> no, Joe, no. <laughs> Whipped them off well, in a blink anyway, of an eye. I'm, I'm glad to see that you're on board with vinyl. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah. I've really enjoyed this week. And when the record oh, companies week, yeah. come out with the next big thing in the next 20 years, and then vinyl has become back yeah, on the back I won't shelf. be taking them back to car boot. Don't go taking yeah. them to car yeah. boot. Yeah, of course. Yeah, well. I wonder that. Because they I, will I come them. back round again, and your Bradley will be most pleased when you when he leave, we find him in his will, in See, your will. I <laughs> never, I, I wasn't old enough to understand when people started to take the vinyls back to car boots. Like I wasn't old enough to to, to see this exciting technology of CDs. CDs was just sort of like around when I was younger, uh, but I am old enough to see that. CDs became problematic and a bit tacky, and the, the cases always broke. The split part, you remember the double cases as well, mm-hmm. uh, shonky. The graphics were always a bit small. I always had that problem getting them open, getting them open, open and yeah. split, and it just felt cheap and nasty. Yeah. Like CDs, oh, I broke so many cases. CDs feel cheap, and especially in today's world, we all like you know we don't want to use as much plastic and stuff like that. There's lots of plastic in there. Yeah. The vinyls, even though there's plastic in making the vinyl, potentially these are new ones, aren't they? Is it? Yeah, it is. But what I'm saying, sorry, it, yeah, is that I get your point. It feels yeah. like I can't understand why people would start just throwing away them. Did I tell you that Dr. Dre about his warehouse full of uh, vinyls? Yeah, yeah. Did I tell you about that? You did, yeah. Oh, okay, never mind. So I've given them all away. Yeah. Well, like, that's all them all. Yeah, and he regrets it. Oh, well, he will. Yeah. Yeah. Because everything. He didn't foresee it. Strangely enough, you could have the most obscure piece of vinyl you think, wow. I'm just going to send that to charity shop because nobody wants that. Don't. Because every no. bit of vinyl has got more value than it used to have. Yeah. yeah. Even the most obscure people that you thought would never do anything, they did something to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and right. they need locking up. <laughs> and they have been, some of them. <laughs> because I have, I have taken a gamble on certain things. I think, whoa, whoa. Now, I don't even know. I'll, I'll try it. I'll try it. It's in sale bucket. I'll have that. I'll see how that works out. I've listened to it and it's been not my thing, but I've subsequently found out that you're joking. It's worth how much? And it might not be the 49p that I paid for it. It might be worth £7.50 or £11, whatever. And I think, you're joking. I've never heard of them. They've never done anything. It might be that they're massive in America, but they don't travel very well. But it's this a, is an early 12 inch single of this particular artist, and you think, well, oh, yeah. take it. It's, everything's got a value. Yeah. Far mean, better than you paid for it. 
I bought back in day, I bought the original. I don't, I don't know, it's only been out. On a short time, I bought Brother in Arms on vinyl. Uh, and I think if you buy like it now, it's about £30. If you can get the original ones, you're looking around about £45. I think I got £2 on car boot for it. Ah, love over gold? Cause, Same thing. Because it was. It were, you know, love over hours, gold, what next album, like. weren't it? I think I flogged it for about two quid. Oof. The thing is, thriller. One pound fifty I got for that. Yeah. I think something like that. Thriller. The thing is, you don't you don't think about it. You don't think it's going to get come back, but it, no. it yeah. has. It has. And and the thing is, that thriller would have been first press probably. Yeah, it was. Oh, I bought it first on the edition or whatever. I bought it on the day it came out. Had this yeah. awful sharpie mark on it. <laughs> get rid of that. Some sort of mint condition. Some, some squiggle condition. up front coming here. Yeah. Near singer's I had, face. I had uh, history. But I can remember buying Thriller on date came out. Yeah? Yeah, and I think I got... I, think, I mean, I might be wrong, but I didn't get no more than two. You had your red leather jacket on with, with shoulder pads. No, that was Swagging into Woolworths. It's, surprised, that, it's surprising <laughs> what's worth things yeah. now. What you, Woolworths. I think I bought it from Woolworths. You probably did, yeah. We were either Woolworths or Sound of Music at Top at Market. There. <laughs> well, they don't know about that. No. But, it's, it's, but you do. I do. I you do. do. Yeah. I think uh, they... Sound of Music was the first go-to, wasn't it? And then if they'd sell tight, you used to run down alleyway, down into uh, Woolworths and see if they'd still got a but there, were, left. there was, was it Roulette Records or something like that that used to be in, in town? There was yeah. two record shops yeah, in the town. One, the one, yeah. At one end of town and one at the other. Yeah, but if you, went to, if you went to Sound of Music, that was just straight off at bus station. So you could get off at bus, Run up, run up, bit of a ramp into Sound of Music, <laughs> buy it, run down ramp, get next bus home, and we in half an hour, you were sat in bedroom with record on, listening to it. Brilliant. I loved it. It was great. But there's also... Like there's a big nostalgia trip going on with this here recent... Uh, there is. It's took me down so many roads when I'm yeah. listening to stuff and I'm like, oh, my God. There's, there's, there's more to great. it than, than the audio and the, the image and stuff like that. So yeah. I, well, we spoke about it before, but I've heard somebody, somebody else speak about it. And it's the fact that the, there's some sort of weight behind... Saving up your money, yeah, to buy this album, and you're investing. In it. When we talk, investing I think, I think time, it's when we're talking about culture. Yeah, yeah. And you you you're buying one album a month because you're paying whatever it is for this new album, and you're going to listen to it. You're going to wear it out, and you you're investing. Yeah. It. And even if you think it's a bit crap at first, you, do you know this this thing like oh it's a grower, yeah 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 like you you wasn't really a grower then. It's like I, I paid. Whatever you paid for it, I'm going to listen to it. Yeah, and then you find out that yeah. you just love it. I will tell you one thing. You wouldn't though, give it time I've of learned. day, sorry, if it was streamed. No, you just, that's it. Well, what do we always do? We listen to the first 30 I seconds. If it doesn't work after 30 seconds, we're good at next track. Yeah. yeah. But you can't. But you can't. Even if you don't like it, you listen to it. Yeah. And you, yeah. and now nah, I won't say you grow to love it. But no, you, but you but, get, you but get you, a better opinion about the album. Yeah. But you don't. Dark Side of the Moon would have flopped if it was streamed today. Oh, it wouldn't work. Possibly. Yeah. Wouldn't Nobody work. would have given it to yeah. our day. Yeah. Wouldn't work. Yeah. They, they put it on, yeah. which chorus? Yeah. We'll get to it in a minute. That's it. And Don't. probably the best track on there for me would have been the one that everybody else would skip. And that's Brain Damage. I think it's, I just love Brain Damage. I think it's a great, brilliant track. One of my favourite tracks, Brain Damage. It's great. great. There's a lot of stuff like that. But there's that. a lot of people who listen to you that now. Get, you won't get past the first Spotify 10 seconds. And you'll go, Brain, skip. Yeah, skip it. <laughs> we'll but, work. Yeah. It's just crazy. Our things have just gone back. But I will give you a tip. So apparently the new vinyls are pressed at 180 grams. Right. So if you have a modern day turntable... And you buy an 180 gram album, which is obviously new, new press, and you put it on, and it keeps skipping. Put a 50 pence piece. Oh, we used to do this back in day. Yeah, and it's because of the the modern day needles aren't as heavy as the olden day ones. Yeah, and the grooves in the old style right or aren't as um no no the grooves in the new ones are deeper than the old ones 
that's the big thing. Everyone's a thin. Yeah. Yeah. So, thin of the R, the yeah. So the thin ones are the old copies. Yeah. The hundred and eighty gram, eight, um, hundred and eighty gram, the thick ones or the new press. Yeah. If you put fifty pence on top of arm, it weights needle down. You see, Wayne, stops what skipping. you've done now is you've accidentally slipped and tripped it into the room of anal listening. <laughs> so, oh, what you want? No, you want to spend fifty quid oh, on a yeah. you No, know, honestly, you spend fifty quid on a needle, and you want to get these speakers. Oh, what what was what, what rate what? is it turning at? No, uh, no, 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 that's not good enough. I you need to it. get a soundproof barrier as well, so it don't no vibrations. Yeah. If a truck goes by, it's going to ruin that album. No. What we used to have is the so. Fidelity Music Master, I think they called it, and it got a grey smoke plastic lid, and the brackets at the back always broke on them, so you you didn't lift it up. You lifted it, you took it, lift it, yeah, put, you lifted it, it down because it broke. But the broke. old, but the old arms put, used to have that turn, that turner on back. That um, that was just a weight balance. Weight were, balance. You, it didn't make any difference to it front did, of it. It did because it obviously lowered it to stop it from no, skipping. That, was, that you kept turning that. It did nothing. It, it made did. you think it did. What you did is you put a two p on arm. No, it's a 50p now. I tried. Oh, it's a 50p yeah. now. Inflation, that yeah, is it. It is. It's gone up because I tried 1p and it didn't work. I tried 2p, it didn't work. 5 didn't work. But you've got to be careful because you might ruin your record. Might have a big group. Yeah. 20, 20 didn't work. Oh, you can oh, really hear the screams. Pleasure. 50 pens on top. Perfect. Would you say it's Bob on? Bang on. Bob on. Bob, Bob on. Bob on. <laughs> on that note. Goodbye. <laughs>